Welcome back friends. In the previous video we have just talked about C. elegans and why we are choosing C. elegans over other organisms in biology. Now, What is the advantage of, of choosing C. elegans? Now, In this video we will be talking about the important uniqueness of C. elegans and that is uh, they can have both sperm as well as egg inside their body and they can self fertilize. So that is a very very unique concept. So let's talk about the self fertilization events that goes on inside the C. elegans body. Now if we look at the anatomy of C. elegans what we can see is that uh, if we look at the both the reproductive system that their whole body and the whole system if this is the whole body uh, the drawing is not that good because C. elegans is much more longer and thinner uh, uh, I make this part wider to uh, make these things clear for you anyways you can look for good pictures in uh, internet or in books now whatever here uh, so whatever main or major thing I need to tell you is that uh, the whole part of the body most part or maximum part of the body is destinated or destined or designed or designated or de uh, for uh, the devotion of their work towards the reproductory system so if this is the whole body now you can see this part is destined for male reproductive this part is for production of egg and obviously sperm and this part I haven't mentioned it earlier this section if I draw it with this green color is this is the ovary this is the ovary right so what we can see here that maximum part of the body is destined to produce the reproductive system that means they are much more bothered about their reproduction and obviously why not obviously why not because all of us we are here for the reproduction because all of us the actual goal of life is to carry on that's the message right actual goal so everything that we are doing is actually for reproduction but for human being after the reproduction also we are having social lives and all these things together so there are ethical issues and everything but most of the case the life came to earth for carrying its journey and the only thing it will make it successful to reproduce right so here also we will be seeing the reproduction and they are destined most of their organ system for the reproduction purpose so this part except for this slight tiny region rest of the part is destined for the reproduction system okay now here in this case we are also having region we call this oviduct okay now if you look at this uh, structure and uh, let's talk about the reproduction so if, let's simplify this picture a little bit now this picture what we can see here from this region we are having a slightly uh, smaller thin than a uh, broad region then again thin and is so this thing you can see this actual this part is going and getting folded and is folded up to this region right so if we elongate this structure what we will get is something like that so let me draw this simple for you so here it comes so here it is like that and let's do a fold so when you do this fold let us do it with this blue color like that right now another important thing I uh, want to tell you is that not all the C. elegans that we will be studying are destined to produce not all the elegans are destined to produce both the things inside their body there are two type of C. elegans systems okay there are two types so if we draw this in broader view we get this there are two types actually sorry let me change the color because this part is for the male system and for the male system we are having this green so I am drawing the male reproductory part with this blue and drawing the rest of the female reproductory part with this black now one important thing I must tell you before going into further discussion is that not all this uh, C. elegans are providing us both the things together there are two different type uh, among the genetic part so remember we have talked about the genetics of C. elegans and what we get about C. elegans they are having five pairs of autosome and one pair of sex chromosome now in the one pair of sex chromosome if we are having this 
plus six chromosome X and X. Now here the X is denoting ten, which is a Roman Roman uh, alphabet, which is ten here. So if we get this, we can get either this or we can get X and O. O means nothing. So another version of C elegans can be found, which are having only one X chromosome, not two. So for this one, which are having both X chromosomes together, only this type of uh, C elegans are able to have both the things sperm as well as egg inside their body. But if they are having one X and one O, they are generally or usually considered as male. And those uh, organisms generally cannot uh, self fertilize because they cannot, they are unable to produce all this regions, they are unable to produce all this female reproductive system and oocytes and all these things. So they can only produce sperms. So what we can do using them, we normally don't use them for a model organism. We don't use these males because uh, it is our uh, actual uh, goal of picking them is to study both the things together, right, as a system. So picking males are not good because they are having only one type of system which is male, which is pretty common in many kind of organisms. But we use this male organisms or male C. elegans in different type of studies, the studies of recombination. So use this male and mate them with these uh, females ones, not mating this different kind of genetic transfer or gene transfer methods. Because you can see we can play with their uh, sex determination using this male and female mating. But usually they mate uh, on their own actually. <laughs> okay. So they self fertilize. So here it is. Here it is the specialized structure that help them to establish the self fertilization. Now if you look, if I draw here at this at this region, we get a pretty bulkier site. This is the site where they start to this is the site where they start to what we can say. At least for, for suppose this is the part which is called the vulva from where the eggs will be laid and this is the section this is the part where everything for the male reproduction will start and they will start to produce the sperms and everything so sperms are generated here it comes the sperm so let me draw the sperms with this triangular shaped dots sperms are generated which are also haploid haploid sperm and haploid sperm nucleus are also there inside the cells and from here what we get, we get, so, say here, from this part, we are getting, so vulva won't be here, let me erase this part. Here we'll be having the eggs, so let me draw the egg with this red color, so here it is the egg nucleus, this is also haploid. haploid egg nucleus okay now what is the process of fertilization now if we look from here we are having the oviduct from the oviduct and the ovary the oviduct is connected and uh, you can't see the connection because it is from the uh, opposite end so it's this these two regions are actually connected so from the ovary the all these eggs and oocytes are developed and then they are uh, released here through the oviduct at this particular site. Now here comes the oocytes at the very beginning, very small cells, even the nucleus are not separated from the cytoplasm using the cell membranes and uh, that much. So as they are getting matured, so the degree of maturation is increasing as they are moving in this direction. So the maturation of these oocytes are getting increased. So you can see no cell division, now cell division will start to occur. Now once they are dividing and dividing and separating the nucleus from the rest of the cytoplasm and once they reach the 10 cell barrier, so at least 10 cell barrier and this particular time sperms or sperm nucleus start to fuse with them. They haven't fused before at least 10 to 12 cells are not there. So if they need to have at least 10 to 12 cells in this division stage, at those stage sperm will fuse with the suicides and then the fertilization will take place. Now the, as the fertilization will take place after the attachment of oocyte as well as with oocyte with this sperm, the nucleus will fuse to produce a zygote. Now as the zygote is produced, it, this, this cell division will, done, will be done further. So here it comes, 
and obviously inside this we are having the nucleus of egg and obviously we are having the nucleus of sperm because the sperms are moving they move to this part and they insert into this body insert into this cell of oocyte and they fertilize it so what we get a blend so after it we get a blend of nucleus so let's design this nucleus with different color black so here it get uh, the cell which are fertilized now this cell will start to divide they will start dividing keep on dividing and once they keep on dividing up up to the division say 40 different cell so they divide in many di directions so divide they did divide they just simply divide in many different cells so up to at least 40 cells when they reach that particular time then they will be getting a signal to be released outside in that stage they will be getting the signal to be released outside so that is very very important in e each and every step is sequentially arranged and sequentially done obviously okay so here it comes when it get the point so they will start to arrange okay so they will start to arrange and once they reach the 40 cell barrier they start to arrange like this clusters okay so you can see here the arrangement clusteral arrangement from this part we see this clusteral arrangement and once after the fertilization is done and 40 cell division re get reached they are having a simple slight a coat on the outside region and then they start to arrange out so here it comes the black colored a coat outside so they are ready to be laid now as here everything is done they need to hold these structures together now they can hold on to the 10 mature eggs 10 to 15 mature eggs at a time in their uh, this particular region now whenever they get 10 to 12 and exceeding the number of eggs their mature number of eggs they are having a pressure and through the valva so here it is the valva so let's, so let's draw the valva here so this is the valva through the valva the eggs start to hatch so not hatch actually they start to lay here it comes the egg so egg will come out okay now the process of egg laying is something like that so here it is a sequential event fertilization is going on as well as the maturation is going on egg formation is going on as the new eggs are forming they are getting deposited so here it comes this is the first step of uh, this is the first step of coming here for the suicides this is the second step of coming of this uh, sperms and this is the third step of fertilization once after the fertilization they will be modified so these are the fourth steps and after the fourth step what they produce are these eggs now when they are producing this mature eggs and they are continuously producing eggs and this egg this new egg a newly produced egg start making the pressure onto the stack of old egg and whenever they get this barrier 10 the limit 10 to 12 eggs exceeding this limit one new egg is laid one old egg is just released from the cell so here it comes so here we are having suppose four cells suppose this is the limit of the cell now one one new egg is laid and arranged in this manner so the old one will be released so this this egg will be released then what we need to do we need to have a continuous production of another egg so egg is deposited and this egg will be released okay so that's how the egg uh, eggs are getting laid okay that's the process of laying eggs for this c elegans okay so this is the process of happening now everything for this male reproductory part is happening at this region as you can see I am giving with these dots so let's so let us uh, draw here also with this some dots ok so this direction and from this region we are having this ovary so we are having ovary and obviously oviduct through which these oocytes are coming ok so this is the process this is the basic process of fertilization and laying of eggs now this whole process can be established from three to five days that is very very fast you can see so a lot of things are need to be done and they are really really fast about all these things as they can produce all everything on their own that's uh, that's the only reason for getting or uh, everything arranged so fast now they can produce each and each individual of this uh, CL again can produce up to 200 eggs up to 200 eggs at a time so they can hold on to 10 to 12 eggs but they can lay up to 200 eggs on its whole lifespan and after everything is done they will die simply 5 day of life cycle okay so this this total system of fertilization again is temperature dependent that's why the life cycle is also temperature dependent in this case okay so this this type of body which are having five pairs of autosome and one pair of x and x this type of body is termed a particular name and this name is sophisticated it is called uh, 
हर्माटो हर्मा फ्रोडाइट एक्चुअली हर्मा फ्रोडाइट आई फॉगर दिस नेम्स मेनी टाइम्स बिकॉज देर आर सच ए हॉरिबल नेम्स ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड हर्माटो हर्मा फ्रोडाइट ओके सो लेट मी लुक इज हर्माटो फ्रोडाइट और हर्मा फ्रोडाइट दिस इज कॉल्ड हर्मा फ्रोडाइट आई गेस हर्मा फ्रोडाइट यस दिस इज कॉल्ड द हर्मा फ्रोडाइट ओके and this anatomy is drawn for the hermaphrodite so it is a hermaphrodite anatomy and this kind of system can be found only in hermaphrodite having five pairs of autosome and one x and x but for the other type so 5a plus xo we can't find this kind of anatomy because they will be missing some many part and many malfunctioning parts so that they cannot fertilize on their own okay so that's the fertilization and sex in hermaphrodite of c elegans and i hope that's helpful thank you